So what's going on guys, DIY Dan here again, and this is another episode of Day to Day Around the House. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I made it a little easier for me to clean out my P-trap that comes out of the evaporative unit on the condensation line that drains to the outside of your house. I'm also gonna show you what can happen if you don't keep an eye on these condensation lines coming out of the side of your house and make sure they're draining properly. And then I'm also gonna go over why your thermostat might all of a sudden lose power, which obviously shuts down the AC to your house if you own a newer home or you just recently had a newer AC system installed in your home. And then while I was up in my attic, upgrading the way the PVC was ran to make it easier for me to clean out that P-trap, I might've come across the entire reason I've been struggling with that P-trap getting clogged the entire time that I've owned this house. And I'm gonna show you what I found and what I did to hopefully rectify it. So let's get to it. Now this is the second video that I've done concerning this matter of unclogging condensation lines in my house. We had originally bought this house brand new probably 13 years ago. And we have always had a problem with the primary drain coming out of the evaporative unit in the attic, clogging the P-trap. In which case it comes out of the secondary drain that goes into the drain pan that is under that evaporative unit and goes out the secondary drain. Now the secondary drain should be coming out of the top port coming out of the side of your house. The primary drain should be coming out of the bottom port coming out of the side of your house if you have a similar setup. And it's always a good idea to keep an eye on those drain ports coming out of the side of your house because if you ever start to get water coming out of the top drain port, that means your primary is clogged. And then if that secondary drain line gets clogged somewhere, you have the possibility of overfilling that drain pan in your attic, which then overflows and covers your ceiling in water. Now this actually happened to us about a year to a year and a half after we bought this house new and luckily enough for us, it was covered under warranty because otherwise this would have been a very expensive repair to do to our house. Now it has been about 13 years and we just recently got a new AC unit which included the outside condenser along with the evaporative unit in the attic. Now it's only been a couple months since we had that installed and we just had our thermostat kick off now when they installed this unit, they said that they had put a updated system as far as the drain goes, and it actually has a float switch on the secondary drain, so that if that senses water, it actually shuts down the AC unit. Now the way the old system was set up is the primary drain ran out the same way as the new one. However, the secondary drain just had a spout that drained into that secondary drain pan, and then that secondary drain ran out to the side of the house. On this setup, the primary drain runs out to the side of the house and the secondary drain out of the evaporative unit has that float switch. And then there is the backup pan, obviously, with the secondary drain running out to the side of the house. So generally speaking, there's always good and bad to updating a system that for the most part was working fine. So obviously the benefit to having this float switch versus just having it drain into that secondary pan and out the secondary drain is that if it does sense water and your primary drain gets clogged, it's gonna electronically shut down your AC system and eliminate the chance of possibly overflowing that drain pan and causing a very expensive repair in your house. The negative side to this is as soon as that primary drain gets clogged, it is going to shut down your AC. And if you're like me in Phoenix, Arizona, having an inoperative AC unit just because the primary drain got clogged in the middle of summer is not really something you want to have happen. Now, in all honesty, the main reason they probably started installing these electronically controlled float switches to shut down the unit is because people neglected to look at their drains coming out of their house and never realized that the primary drain had gotten clogged in the first place, let that secondary drain just keep going and going and going until it got clogged, which in turn caused the ceiling to start dripping water from it, which homeowners tend not to like. So instead of counting on the homeowner to properly maintain their AC system, they just made it so that's not really a possibility. Now there is two sides to that as well, because in my case, the reason my P-trap was getting clogged so often is because both AC units, the one that came in the house new and the one I just had installed were both installed improperly and there was not enough fall in the condensation lines as they were running outside the house. In fact, there was a five foot section of those pipes that was almost perfectly level instead of having a downward slope. This can cause that water in there to sit there and become stagnant, which can sludge up a lot faster than if there's proper water flow and it's able to drain easily out the side of the house. So here's a good look at the way they plumbed in that primary drain on my new system. 
You'll notice the 90 degree elbow going to the P-trap. Then they do have a union, so you could take it apart there and then go a little further and you have a breather pipe. And then the rest of that goes out to the side of the house. Now the way I rigged my previous setup on my old AC unit was I actually had two unions glued in place. So when that would get clogged, I just took both unions apart, took that down to the sink, cleaned it out, and then took it back up in the attic and reassembled it. There wasn't really anything wrong with this besides the fact I had to get up and down out of the attic. So being as though I'm not getting any younger and don't like getting them up and down out of the attic any more than I have to, I decided to upgrade that setup a little bit. So it only required me getting up in the attic the one time. So right here I'm just using my oscillating tool in order to cut the PVC at that 90 degree elbow. Because even with that union on there, there was no way for me to unthread that fitting out of the evaporative unit because of the float switch and the length of the pipe after the P-trap. Once cutting that off, I removed the fitting from the primary drain coming out of the evaporative unit, and I noticed they didn't use any type of a pipe tape to help seal the threads on that. So then I decided to take the float switch out and go ahead and pipe tape that and put it back in place before reassembling the primary drain. So when putting this together, I had pretty much all the PVC that I needed. So I was using up some miscellaneous stuff I had around the house. So if I would have went and purchased it, I could have got a slip union, which would have eliminated a couple fittings. But being as though the union was the most expensive part and I had a threaded one, that's the direction I went. So just keep that in mind when you're seeing this put together. So I had a little extra section of three quarter inch PVC, which is what they were using on this drain. So I glued a three quarter inch slip to three quarter inch pipe thread fitting on the end of that piece, then added some pipe tape to the threads and threaded it into the evaporative unit. Now I applied that pipe tape to keep any unnecessary water from possibly seeping past those threads and dripping into the secondary pan. So there is a right and wrong way to apply plumber's tape and if you've ever struggled with that, I will put an icon at the end of this video you can click on to help you out. Once threading that piece of PVC in there, I did cut it to length after getting past the float and went ahead and glued on another slip to 3 quarter inch male pipe thread onto the other end of that PVC. Went ahead and applied pipe tape to that fitting and then threaded a 3 quarter inch female pipe thread union on to the end of that. Now once again, if I wouldn't have been using stuff I already had and I would have had to go purchase this stuff, I would have purchased a slip union instead of a female pipe thread union and that would have eliminated a couple extra fittings from this assembly. Once I threaded that union on, I did reassemble the float switch. It just slides down into place and then went ahead and flipped the cover back down and locked it into place. I installed another male pipe to slip fitting on the other side of that union, obviously applying that plumber's tape to the threads. Tighten that down by hand because really with the plumber's tape, that's all that needs. Then went ahead and cut a small piece of PVC out and glued it to that fitting. Once gluing that in place, I went ahead and cut the P-trap off of the 90 degree fitting that they had put on. Lucky for me that P-trap did have enough straight PVC pipe there once cutting that 90 degree fitting off to still glue on a T-fitting onto that P-trap without a problem. I grabbed the 3 quarter inch T-fitting, put primer on all three sides of that, then glued it in place, and then went ahead and glued the P-trap on the bottom of that T. Then I went ahead and used the actual original piece of PVC that came in the evaporative unit that I cut off with the oscillating tool and put that on the top side of that T. Now I did end up having to buy a three quarter inch female pipe thread PVC cap and that's what I ended up threading onto that original fitting at the top. And this was basically just to prevent if that primary did get clogged in any way, shape or form that it was sealed and wouldn't possibly overfill even though it would probably be spilling out of the evaporative unit itself way before it would get to the height of that PVC cap that I installed. Now because I added that union and those threaded fittings because that's what I had, that PVC assembly stuck out from the evaporative unit a lot more than what the original one did and because of that I ended up cutting a section of pipe so I could shorten it where it 90'd to go outside the house. And this is where I noticed that there wasn't nearly enough fall in the condensation lines that were running out to the side of the house. In fact, they were almost perfectly level for about five foot after that 90 degree angle right there. Then after that, they finally got to a point where they were sloping downward towards the side of the house. So in order for that evaporative unit to drain properly, obviously there has to be a downward slope on those pipes. If that water is just sitting there level, 
it can get stagnant and what happens to stagnant water it gets slimy it gets nasty and it will clog that pipe so another thing I realized when I cut that piece of pipe is that this entire pipe was clogged with that slimy, nasty algae gunk. So at this point, obviously I needed to figure out a way to clear that pipe going all the way out the side of the house from that nasty stagnant gunk that was in that pipe. So the first thing I did was clear out that section of pipe that I had cut off that went to the union where I modified it. Then I went ahead and put that section of pipe back in place, cut the other pipe to length and glued those two pieces back together using a three quarter inch slip coupler. Now obviously that first section of PVC pipe was clean because I went ahead and flushed that using the hose out in the backyard. However, I still had to figure out how to unclog the rest of that pipe going to the outside of the house. Now I'm gonna show you the way I cleared this pipe. There might be a better way or a less problematic way. I don't know how to word it correctly because it was a little risky putting a garden hose up in my attic. So what I ended up doing is using our 65 foot Stanley hose reel and I ran that hose through my house. Obviously I turned it on and made sure my nozzle on the end of that garden hose was well sealed and that the hose had no leaks before doing this. I disconnected that primary drain at that union, stuck a garden hose nozzle in there that I could shut on and off at that point. I had one of my daughters and me up in the attic. I was controlling the hose and I had my daughter putting her hand over the breather pipe so there was no chance of creating back pressure and it coming out of that pipe. I also had my other daughter down getting ready to shut that hose off in case I lost control of that nozzle and it started spraying all over her attic that she could shut it down. And then I had my wife watching the primary drain coming out of the side of the house to let me know when it was coming out clean and not a bunch of nasty crap. I also had cell phones on speakers so we could have full communication between all of us during this process in case something went wrong. And I am going to let you listen to this in real time so you can hear us talking to each other and how this process went. All right, turn on the hose. Hose is on. Hose is on. Yes. Okay, you should start getting water. Yes? I got drippies. I don't got water. So our garden hose nozzle did have a little bit of a rubber sleeve on it, which helped seal it into that three-quarter inch union. Oh. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to keep going then. I was actually quite surprised at how much force I had to keep on that garden hose to keep it from leaking and pushing back against me. Is it flowing good? Keep going. It, it, it like flowed for a second and then it stopped. It was a good thing I had put that extra plastic bin underneath us because even with the amount of force I was holding that garden hose into that fitting, you could still see water pushing back against me and dripping into that pan. Still not clean? If there's still oh, chunkies coming up, we're going to keep running. It's clean. You okay? You okay? Yeah. It's clean. It's clean? That's goofy. Yeah, clean. All right. Mm -hmm. Turn off the water? Yeah, go ahead and turn off the water. Once we had cleared that pipe, I just reassembled it at that union and tightened it down. Now I did empty out that drain pan that I was using, but I did leave it under there just as a little bit of a backup in case I developed any type of a little bit of a leak on any of my joints or on that union. So here's a quick demonstration of how easy it's gonna be for me to clean out this primary drain if it does get clogged again. I just removed that cap and then I had a large zip tie that I'm actually gonna leave up in that little backup drain pan I put. I stick that zip tie down in and through that P-trap to clear it and then go ahead and re-thread that cap into place so I don't have a possibility of any leakage there. Now being as though it was Phoenix, Arizona and I was in 100 degree heat, I really couldn't shut down the AC unit while I was going through this process. So here is a little video of how much water was coming out of that evaporative unit while I was working on it. So now I'm going to get into how I rectified the problem of no fall in my condensation lines going out the side of my house. So because I could not lower the condensation lines in the attic any more than what they already were, I decided the only way to get some fall in those condensation lines was to raise the AC unit in the attic. And the first thing I needed to know before even attempting to do that is there was enough slack in the two lines that are holding the Freon in it coming from the AC unit outside. 
so that they don't possibly get pinched, kinked, or anything like that while I was moving the evaporative unit. So here's a short clip of after I did that modification and you can see that primary drains running on top of that wooden block. Before I did this modification, it was running alongside of it and those lines were almost perfectly level. Now that I've raised them up on that block, I've got about an inch of fall in that first section and I think it's gonna drain much better. In order to accomplish this, the first thing I did was lay a level on the top of this evaporative unit and see how they had this unit sitting in my attic so I could match it and make sure it was good after I did my modification. So right here is a picture of that level both directions and they basically had the bubble towards the one line basically leaning both directions a little bit towards the drains in that evaporative unit. Now because my evaporative unit was held with cables that were crimped, I didn't want to cut those in any way, shape, or form. So what I decided to do was just add a couple of lag screws over on the bracing in the attic a little bit just to raise each one of those cables up about an inch or two. Once I installed that lag screw, I just lifted up on that side of the evaporative unit and pulled that cable across that extra lag screw in order to lift it up a little bit. Once I guesstimated the first one, then I just measured how much I moved that lag screw up and I matched that for the other three corners. After doing all four corners, I did put my level back on the top of that evaporative unit to make sure I was matching what I had before I moved it. I did end up moving one or two of those lag screws, I think, just to make sure I was perfectly matched to what I had before I had modified it. So here is a little better look at that modification that I did make. You can see the wire going through the center of that one anchor, that's the original, and then the lag screw that I added on the right hand side and I did that at all four locations where it was hanging. Now after making that modification, I did take a good look at my ducting coming in and out of that evaporative unit. To make sure none of that ducting got pulled away from the evaporative unit or pinched in any way, shape, or form and everything looked good. And obviously I took a look at those Freon lines to make sure I didn't damage those in any way, shape, or form while I was doing it as well. So one thing I did have to verify after moving that evaporative unit is that the drain pan was still sitting correctly under that unit. And I did have to move a couple screws. Now if the drain pan is attached strictly to the evaporative unit, then that pan should be sitting at the same level it was before you move it. However, if they're attached to the rafters in any way, shape, or form, then you might have to move them in order to make that level good so that water will drain to that secondary drain line going out the side of the house instead of possibly out the back side of that pan where it might end up covering your ceiling in water. So I did end up having to unscrew some of those screws from those rafters in the attic and moving them up the same amount that I moved the evaporative unit up in that attic. The other thing I did need to verify is that that secondary drain line still had fall to it after modifying this. And what I ended up doing is just using a super heavy duty zip tie to put around that primary drain that I had good flow on and lift that secondary up just a little bit so I had that same flow on that line. One other minor modification I did do is add a 90 and a 45 to the breather on that. So if there's ever a backup for whatever reason, even though it'll probably never happen, that that breather does drain into the actual drip pan that was under the evaporative unit. Instead of the possibility of it dripping onto my ceiling. But once again, there's never really a possibility of this happening because it'd be going out the air vents in the house before it would get to the level of that breather. But since I had the parts, I figured why not? Now this has been a couple weeks since I've been up in my attic and I just hopped up there to make sure I didn't have any leaks, any drips in the drain pan under the evaporative unit or my little backup drain pan that I put. And everything was nice and dry as it should be. I even popped open the float to make sure there was no water in it and there wasn't. So that is going to wrap it up for this video guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and it gave you some good information. If so, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. The whole concept of my channel is to give you guys the most information in the least amount of time as possible so I don't waste your time. And I hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Later.